negative 2 thirds x plus 1 on the coordinate plane. Remember when you're graphing a line, you always want to start at your y-intercept, and that goes on the y-axis. So I would put a dot at 1, and now my slope is negative 2 thirds. Remember that negative can go on the top or the bottom. So if I'm going to think about my slope as being negative 2 over positive 3, that would mean from here I would go down 2 onto the right 3. Okay. Remember that with slope, the top number always tells you to go up and down, and then the bottom number tells you left and right. Um, I could have taken that negative sign and put it on the bottom as well. I could have made this 2 over negative 3. And again, that's okay as long as I don't put a negative on both of them at the same time. I can put the negative wherever I feel like. So if that were the case, starting back at this 1, I would have gone up 2, but then since that's a negative 3, I would have gone to the left 3. Either way, you should end up with the same line. It should look something like this. Now, I, I see a lot of confusion on this next section. 2 through 4 have nothing to do with this graph up here. Okay, 2 through 4 are all talking about the line y equals 6. Remember, that's a line where every single y coordinate is 6. And if you were to think of this in a table, let me just sketch this over here. This would be one of these situations where every y is a 6, and then x can be anything you feel like. It could be a negative 2, it could be a 5, it could be a, I don't know, a 0, it could be a 200. No matter what, y is always going to equal 6. Okay, so that's what's going on in this equation. So in number 2, when I want two points on this line, all I have to do is come up with a couple of points that have any x value I want, and then my y value would be equal to 6. I could even take them right out of here. Negative 2, 6, 5, 6 would work. Okay. Anything you want, just so long as the y number is 6. Now it says to identify the slope in the y intercept. has nothing to do with this graph, but just since it's a coordinate plane. If I went to negative 2, comma 6, oh, and that's actually going to be off my graph. It would be up here. Okay, 5 comma 6 would be up here, 0 comma 6 would be right here. Hopefully you can kind of visualize that this is going to be a horizontal line. Okay, if it's a horizontal line, remember we said the slope is always 0. Okay, and then the y-intercept is just going to be 6. Okay, so you could think about it as actually visualizing the horizontal line and knowing that the slope of a horizontal line is 6. The other thing you could do is think of this as being y equals 0x plus 6. Okay, because you have no x's there. If there are no x's there, you have 0x's. So then your slope would be 0, your y-intercept would be 6. Okay? And yet another thing you could do, if you really wanted to, to make sure you were right, is pick two of these points that we came up with up here and do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now that doesn't help you with your intercept really at all, but it does help you with your slope. Okay? Now, domain and range, everybody's favorite question. Remember, domain is asking, what is x allowed to be? Think back to what we did back here in this table. What was x allowed to be? x could be anything. Okay, so my domain is anything, all real numbers. My range, however, is what is y allowed to be. And if you look at that table, the only thing y can be is 6. Okay, so domain is anything, range is just 6. Okay, and number five again, and I think this is just confusing the way this is laid out. Number five is its own question. It doesn't have anything to do with two through four. It says, true or false, this line, y equals one-third x plus seven, 
is parallel to this line. Well, if they were parallel, that would mean their slopes would be the same. The slope in this one is one-third. The slope in this one is negative three. Those two are not the same. So this would be false. Down to number six. Number six is a tough problem, okay? Um, and I understand that. But um, I think once you see it, it will make sense. So we have Joe leaving Mariana's house and driving to Stephen's house. So I'm gonna set myself up a picture here. Okay, so here is Mariana's house, down here. Here is Stephen's house, down here. And Joe is driving from one to the other. So right now, Joe is somewhere in between. Okay. I know that the two houses are 60 miles apart. So I know this entire distance from here to here has to be 60 miles. And now I'm going to look at the two pieces that make up that 60 miles. It says here that Joe's distance from Stephen's house, we should call D. So Joe's distance from Stephen's house is right here. Okay. Now, the distance he has already driven, if he has been driving for 35 miles an hour, we don't know how many hours, we, it says just to use H, but if I wanted to get that total distance, I would do 35 times H. That would give me the distance he's already driven. Just think about it this way. If you were driving 50 miles an hour for two hours and you wanted to know how far you went, you would do 50 times two. That's what I'm doing here, is I'm taking the speed and multiplying it by how long he's been driving and that will give me how far this is, okay? So I've gone this far. I know I have this far left to go. My total has to be 60. So my equation is gonna look like this. 35h, which is the distance I've already traveled, plus the distance I have left to go, has to be 60. Okay, so 35h plus d is equal to 60. Now number seven says, after how many hours will Joe be five miles away from Stephen's house? So we need to think about what letter that represents. Basically, I want to know when will this be equal to five. When will he be five miles away? That would be my D. So I'm putting five in for D. Whoops. 35H plus five is equal to 60. If I subtract five from each side, I'll end up with 35H equals 55. And then let's divide by the 35. And I come up with 1.57. Okay. And that, that makes some sense. If you're only going 35 miles an hour and you're, you need to travel 60 miles, it's going to take you a few hours, probably about two hours to get there. It, after an hour and a half, you'll be only five miles away. So. Yeah, if you get your answer, I would kind of think about it, think it through and make sure it makes sense. Okay, let's look at the back. A f oops. A fertilizer company mixes X pounds of a fertilizer that is 15% nitrate. So X pounds goes with 15% with Y pounds that is 20% nitrate. In number eight, I know I have 45 pounds of nitrate total. So this is like those ones we've been doing in class with the chemistry type problems where you're mixing the solutions. So I would do 15% of X, so that would be 0.15X, plus 20% of Y, 
and I know my total needs to be 45 pounds. So that would be my equation. Okay. Now number nine says, how many pounds of the 20% fertilizer must be added to 65 pounds of the 15% fertilizer? So I have 65 pounds of the 15%. The 15% was my X. So that means 65 needs to go in in place of X. I would write that out like this. 0.15 times 65 plus 0.20Y is equal to 45. Let's see. 0.15 times 65. This is 9.75 plus 0.20y is equal to 45. Let's subtract 9.75. And if the 0.20y is equal to 35.25. Um, let's see, I'm going to move this up here. So from there, I would divide both sides by 0 0.20, and I would end up with 176.25 pounds. So you just have to pay attention to which variable you're plugging this in for. Is it the x or is it the y? And again, I saw that this was the 15% fertilizer, which was my X from up above. Okay, for 10 and 11, as soon as I see the words, write an equation for a line, I know that I need an M and I need a B. Okay? So, if it's parallel to this line, I know that I want to use this exact same slope. So that negative 4 is going to become my m. But I don't care about the rest of this line. The only thing I care about is the slope. It tells me down here that my y-intercept is negative 2. So that's my b. Once I have those two things, I can say y equals negative 4x minus 2. Okay. All right, and number 11. Um, a similar question with number 11. I know I'm going to need an M and a B. Now for this one, I'm doing a perpendicular line, which means I still want to steal this slope. And this slope here is really a negative 1, okay? Except for it to be perpendicular, I have to do something to it. I have to make it the opposite reciprocal. So this right now is negative 1 over 1. The opposite reciprocal would be positive 1 over 1, which is just 1. And then my B value, it tells me down here, is 4. So my final equation, when I put those two things together, is Y equals 1X plus 4. And of course, if you just left it as X plus 4, that would be okay too. Okay? So I hope that helps. I will be checking email all night, so if you want to send me an email with a question about any of these problems, feel free. Um, you can also post a comment right here on this video, and then I can answer it for everybody to see. So, and then uh, we'll take a few minutes in class tomorrow to go over this before you take your quiz. Good luck!